about this development of lifelong skills. This one uh, probably could be its own video, but uh, this is the main why. Why do you do this? Uh, you know, even if you never get to see competition, even if it's just a semester or a year of your life, even if you decide to move on, what are you going to take with you when you move? And here are the uh, five lifelong skills that we're going to talk about. And this, there could be a longer list. There could be a different list. But for me, these are in no particular order the five lifelong skills that you'll benefit from mock trial. The first one I, I will have a whole other video about. And it's about professional presentations or to speak about it more narrowly, public speaking. Uh, you know, I think if you see studies, you see that the only thing ranked above uh, the fear of death is the fear of public speaking. And there is something to uh, to working on it and actually uh, managing that stress and that anxiety and that fear that goes with public speaking. But I think about it differently and more broadly than just public speaking, just standing up in front of any audience and saying something. Professional presentations is really uh, the way of the future, and it, and it makes so much sense um, with the advent of technology and the advancement of technology. The idea that in business, in corporate America, as a professional, you will always be presenting to others. You will always be talking about your product or your service if you're an entrepreneur. You'll be in a boardroom or in a meeting raising your hand or giving a presentation of some kind and it's not just a, a presentation of here's some information do with it what you will a professional presentation is often I'm talking to you about something because I want you to act I'm, I'm trying to persuade you and and talk to you about something that I hope that you'll go with me and you'll move with me because of it and think about it if I'm counsel for the plaintiffs in a civil trial uh, I am not just asking questions, not just making a closing argument or an opening statement. I am trying with every word and with every step of trial to persuade my audience, the jury, to act in a certain way, to find for the plaintiffs, to find the defendant liable to award money or other relief as my damages. So professional presentations uh, are something that you gain from mock trial because you get used to having everything that you do, every question, every argument matter because it's all in the direction of compelling your audience to act. The second one has to do with questioning. Uh, other than lawyers, we don't think a lot, a lot of people are being in the profession of asking questions. Maybe some folks that uh, are interviewers and talk show hosts and have uh, regular guests on where they ask them questions so we learn a little bit more about the guest. But for the most part, Questioning is something that we also have to do as to how we how we gather information, how we gain evidence, how we get to the bottom of things. There's different types of questions. Maybe if someone is friendly to me and and, uh, and someone who I'm going to call in my favor, someone like a witness at a trial, I want to ask them open ended or or softball type questions just to facilitate the information coming in a way that I've already organized. But other times, maybe the person I'm talking to is not so friendly. They look more akin to a witness that the other side presents and that I might cross-examine at trial. Well, those questions are going to be different. We're going to learn about the different questions. And they're going to be, I'm now going to organize questions to, to really get at my point, less your uh, information that's coming out. So questioning, the different styles of questioning, and how can, you can use questions and formulate questions is an absolute skill that will stick with you uh, from mock trial. The next one, and this comes from organization and analysis, if you think about it in the context of uh, really any level of school, high school, college, certainly in law school, uh, the idea of mock trial has so much information that is at the core that might be central to your case. And then there's a lot of noise, a lot of periphery, a lot of other information, a lot of red herring stuff that doesn't matter. So the idea that you have to pierce through all the noise and all the all that's included in a mock trial fact pattern and all that might come out of um, witness testimony to get to what matters to distill down in an organized way what matters to analyze as facts come in is that part of my messaging is that part of my central case and part of my theme or is it something that falls on the outside is it contrary to my theme where i might have to deal with it uh, in some other way like argument or or cross-examination questions so thinking about organization and thinking about constant analysis. And the fourth one that I come up with this critical thinking and active listening is, is in line with that. Um, mock trial is a dynamic presentation. 
it's not like theater where it's scripted. You have to actually be thinking throughout because it changes throughout with new testimony that comes from a witness's mouth, with new evidence that gets in before this judge when it didn't get in the, before the last judge in the last mock trial. The dynamics change, things shift. You have to constantly evaluate and reevaluate what's going on with your case and what's going to be the most effective by way of your presentation to compel folks to act. And that calls for something that is really needed uh, today more than ever, and that's active listening. If you listen to uh, cable TV and these shows that just have people in different boxes shouting at each other when it's their turn to talk, that's not a dynamic presentation. It's not a professional presentation, and it certainly is not reactive. It doesn't flow from a change stance because you're listening to what the other person has to say. That's the listening that we see too much of, of I'm going to pause talking and wait for my next time to talk. Active listening, what you have to do with witness testimony, what you have to do with your opponent's presentation, both their questions of their witnesses and their, uh, their jury addresses, whether it's opening statement or closing argument, you have to actively listen to see whether one, you might object or uh, whether your presentation has to change. So it really hones that lifelong skill of thinking constantly, reevaluating constantly, and actively listening. Uh, and that feeds into the last part, which is really about your professional development, how you engage in self-reflection, how you manage feedback and critique. We talked about as it relates to collaborating with coaches, good coaches are not only going to hold you accountable and and hopefully encourage you to know where you are on your path and on your development but they're also going to be critical and they're going to critique you throughout and tell you what you can do better on and what areas you can work on well as you get better you're going to be able to self-reflect and you're going to be able to say that wasn't my best opening uh, statement and here's why i didn't do a good job handling my direct examination questions with that one particular witness in this practice in this mock trial and here's why so this this ability to engage in a professional presentation to come away with it to have some time to think about it to self-reflect and incorporate feedback and do better the next time that's a lifelong skill and mock trial commands it you need to do it and it's something that'll stick with you throughout So we talked a little bit about this as a skill, but I want to expand upon this in its own category, and that's learning to react and think on your feet. Unlike a play or a musical concert or anything else, this is a mock trial is a dynamic uh, presentation. You must actually react to what happens at this trial. So you could have the same fact pattern. You could be on the same side, whether it's plaintiff or defense, or in a criminal case, you could be the prosecution as the plaintiff. You could have the same case, same side, same witnesses, and in different trials and different days, it might not go the same way. Even if you ask the same questions of the witnesses, there might be different objections and different rulings from the court. Uh, certainly your opponent might have different things to say and a different theme or theory about the case. So you're always in that trial, more like a game, more like athletics. You always have a different opponent. You always have a different way that the game goes. So the idea that you have to be ready and you have to be uh, prepared to react and prepared to um, to get on with this trial and to think on your feet to the presentation is a huge skill. One thing to be uh, engaged in public speaking where here's my speech, here's what I'm going to say this day. I've worked on it getting there and then I delivered it without notes in a way that seems conversational. That's one part of the skill. Another part is I'm asking questions there's something happening from the other side of the courtroom by way of objections, by way of different answers of a witness. How do I react to that? How do I think on my feet? How do I pivot? Uh, and those are the types of skills that can stay with you because if you're engaged in one of these professional presentations later on in life, you're on a sales call and you're talking to a client or you're talking to another company and you're engaged in one of these professional presentations and a different question comes at you that you didn't anticipate or something happens during the meeting that you just didn't plan for in your presentation. Well, this skill that you've worked on through mock trial will teach you to react, will teach you to remain calm, will teach you to uh, think on your feet as a professional and get to the next answer and do it uh, in a seamless way. 
lastly, I, I don't think you can underestimate the idea that uh, it's just different to prepare for something that is in, in and of itself a competition. So it's one thing to have a speech. It's one thing to have public speaking. It's one thing to ask questions and it's, uh, and, and to have some of these skills that you're working on where you're critically thinking and analyzing and reacting on your feet as we've talked about it already. But because there's other teams there because there's other mock trialers in the room because there's someone that's offense versus defense plaintiff versus defendant a versus b you have someone you're going against and a lot of mock trial is how you perform that's why the ability to collaborate with your teammates and coaches is so important because it's did you bring your your best individual did you bring your best team effort to the competition that day but at the end of the day it's 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 the added pressure. It's the added dynamic of having all your work culminate in a, uh, in a competition versus another team and putting it on the line and having someone evaluate you and say, I liked their presentation better. I liked your presentation better. Uh, if I were a true juror here, I would be uh, going with the plaintiff side of the case. I would be going with the defense side of the case. So competition add something. It adds something to your dynamic as a team and the way that you hold each other accountable because it's not just um, it's not just a sort of empty event at the end. There's a competition, there's winners and losers, there's advancing and not advancing, so on. And it also promotes just healthy uh, nerves that fuel through all this. You want to do well, you've practiced it, you want to, you want your team to do well, you're hopefully your coaches and your whole dynamic, everyone's looking forward to this competition as being an event by which uh, you can be sort of judged and see where you're at and see how you can get better. So with competition, it helps us on that personal journey that, that A to B of if we have a competition in week one, uh, how did we do? What did they say? How did they evaluate us? How did we self-reflect and and uh, and evaluate ourselves? And and how do we get feedback not only from the competition but from our own coaches? Uh, and then how can we get better with it? And then week two and week ten, depending on how many of these different competitions we had. In law school, it's it's you may have several competitions, but you may be in one given semester on one team that has one competition, and you work for months leading up to it. You might be able to present the trial a few times in that competition, but maybe not. And and that's it. You kind of culminate on that one big day. Uh, mock trial in high school and college sometimes has a season where you, you present the same trial several times over several different weeks and have time to work on it in between. But either way, you're getting to see through the competition sort of the day where you put it all on and then some reflections, some critique, and maybe uh, a, another day where you get to go back. Again, special thanks to credits as it relates to the slides, photographs. Some additional resources, especially as it relates to the information for the value of mentoring and working with uh, an adult. Again, look out for other videos after um, part two. This is a 10 part series of introduction to mock, mock trial. I'm Professor Wes Porter. Aloha.